When my wife Marissa saw that our current route to Idaho took us through one of the most epic boondocking spots in America, Wall, South Dakota, she told me we have to stay there. I told her, you know it's gonna be 100 degrees, right? And we'll have no electricity, no water, and no sewer. Well, we voted on it. And uh, off to Wall we go. Should you boondock in 100 degree weather? I'm confident that after this video, you're either never gonna boondock a day in your life, or you're going to immediately pack your bags and head to Wall, South Dakota. It's time to let go and get going. So let me start off by saying, this might be the absolute worst idea we've ever had. <laughs> Here in Brandon, South Dakota, it's hot. Our sewer hose is sweating. <laughs> Everything is sweating. I mean, it's been almost 98 degrees here. And then as I'm watching the weather in Wall, South Dakota, I mean, it's it's topping 100 degrees the next couple of days. I mean, we went back and forth and back and forth. Do we do this? Do we not do this? Do we just go get full hookups and just visit Badlands and the stuff around Wall that we really like to do? Do we just pass Wall and then come back later? And ultimately, I, I think we just started to feel like, you know what? Most likely, our, our favorite boondocking spot of all time to not go there because of a little bit of heat. Okay, a lot of heat. <laughs> just feels like we're we're turning in our uh, full-time RV or boondocking card or something. So. We're gonna do it. Prep for this boondocking in 100 degree weather starts today because I have not started my Honda generator in, I don't know, four months, maybe even six months. Oh, wow. We've got to make sure that thing works. I thought I got all that out. Almost done. Okay. One of the hardest things you could do on an engine is to not start the engine. You might be thinking, oh, Nathan, you have lithium. Well, yeah, we have lithium, and we can run our AC with our lithium, but it's, I don't know how long it'll go, three hours, four hours? So we have 1,200 watts, and we're gonna be showing up at like seven o'clock. So we're not gonna be getting enough solar coming in to keep that AC going long enough, I feel like, to have enough of an impact, like having something like this. If you're boondocking <laughs> in 100 degree weather for some reason, have a generator. <laughs> Uh oh, I meant to do that. Looking. All right, we're gonna let it sit for a few minutes and think about what it's done. It literally left a dent in my toe, which was already uh, in pain because of the Grand Canyon. Little known fact, if you've seen my nasty feet before, I've had bunion surgery on both feet nine years ago because I had it around the time Hensley was born, which is a terrible idea. Don't ever do that to your wife. <laughs> so we already gonna be off because you're having the baby. Let's just go ahead and have my bunion surgery at the same time. And you can sort of take care of both of us. So yeah, I know, not good, not good. Toes are super sensitive. <laughs> Ironic thing, this isn't even the flavor I wanted. Yeah, I'm really hoping <laughs> this is not the way this video is gonna go. So we keep heading northwest. And it's still hot. I mean, obviously, it's pretty miserable if we're gonna go boondock in this kind of heat. But at the same time, man, it's been years since we've been to these spots and we love them so much. And so we're kind of thinking about putting it to the test and seeing at what temperature can we boondock and pull it off. Hey, are you ready? To sleep in 100 degree heat tonight. No. No, it goes, no you don't want to do it? Nope. <laughs> Why not? Because I don't like sleeping in heat. I'd rather sleep in the cold than the hot. <laughs> That's true. That actually uh, that actually makes a lot of sense. So we've boondocked in the cold quite a bit actually because you can you can always turn up the heat. It's not that bad. You get you even have propane that's not using electricity. Um, it's much trickier to boondock in heat because the only way you're gonna get rid of that heat other than like increasing airflow is with an air conditioner, which is a power hog on your RV. So we're doing a few things to kind of prep this morning. Marissa has already started having <laughs> second, thoughts. second thoughts. I know how hot I am. I can't imagine how hot Yogi the Bear is. Yogi the Bear definitely needs a raise. <laughs> it's gotta be hot. I'm just gonna be completely honest. Like I'm really nervous. I do not like being super uncomfortable i know i talk about all the time you got to be comfortable being uncomfortable but i mean like we don't have to sit in 100 degree weather i've almost chickened out multiple times 
I'm chicken it out. I'm starting to come back to realization when I'm sitting under the AC and it feels nice and cool. I'm like, yeah, let's go boondock and hike at 100 degrees. But then when I'm outside sweating like a pig, I start changing my tunes. And I don't know. I'll go back and forth, back and forth what to do. <sighs> We've already changed our plans a lot. I don't know. I can't decide. I love this area so much and I don't want to be hot. The first thing we've done, we've already kind of cranked this down to 70 on, on our two ACs. So I'm letting it get as cold as it can before we head out. We have a, it's probably gonna be about a five hour drive today. So maybe this is for nothing, I don't know. But I'm like, it's not gonna hurt to try. Just get everything, the whole RV, the walls and everything, the aluminum, the, just get everything cooled down just all throughout the RV. So we love our outdoor fridge, but it does use some energy. So typically when we boondock, we just turn it off. We bought chocolate for our last event. It had a, just a little bit left over uh, on the estimation of what we needed. So this pile of chocolate's gonna go inside because that would be very interesting to see what happens to that chocolate if this fridge gets turned off. I think everything else out here will be okay. I mean, this has grown on me a little bit, especially when it gets hot. You come out here, you're already outside, you can grab a cold drink. Like that's that's really nice. I'm, I'm still not gonna say I'm 100% sold on it because of the power it takes when you're boondocking, the space it takes, but she kind of compromised with me and let me store some things in here too. And that's made me a little more okay with it. You guys ready for breakfast? Uh, yeah. So much chocolate. During my break, I watch YouTube videos. I'm about to take it apart, clean the carburetor. Put it back together. All that to get to that. So I'm gonna clean out this. And there is, yeah, there's definitely some gunk in there. I can see it. I can see it right there. My Sony just overheated. It's already way better. Didn't start, we were going. <laughs> Boondocking at 100 degrees, here we come. All right, so we're putting the slides in. We have three fans we can turn on going on the road, so I'm gonna turn those three fans on. It's gonna open right here and let the heat come out the top of that in Hensley's bed. We got another one right here. Got all this condensation. Off. That controls that fan up there. Okay, so I goofed on our batteries. The whole point of staying in full hookups is to <laughs> make sure your batteries are topped off before you go to boondock in 100 degree weather. But our batteries are currently at 37%. So I think I know what I did. We had stayed at a harvest host just before we got to Jellystone. And so I'd set the RV to only be taking in a small amount of power because the harvest host we're at let us have 20 amp. So we were only pulling in 20 amps the whole time we were at this Jellystone running two ACs, which is kind of crazy in and of itself <laughs> that we're running two ACs off of 20 amps um, <laughs> and our batteries and it worked pretty much flawlessly for three nights. So now what? I don't know. Taking a break. I think ideally we would have stopped somewhere with, with air conditioning or something. I'm allowed to do it. When you gotta go, you gotta go. I gotta go pee. I mean, we're at 52%. <laughs> so it's, it's pouring in. We're getting like... To a bathroom. 940 watts coming in. More than 40, maybe even 45 amps are coming in. So it's pretty cool to think about the sun just pouring in 40, 50 amps into the RV. Let's see how hot it is in here. It's funny that we stop at a rest stop and we want to use our own bathroom. That's one of the perks of RV life. I'm not gonna say it feels terrible. Oh, well, I thought it felt cool in here, but it's 91, so that's pretty yeah, warm. <laughs> We're gonna stay optimistic. This is gonna be great. 
Yeah, the original plan was to maybe like a couple hours before we stop, I would go ahead and kick the AC on since we have the battery juice to do it and then it would be cooling it down. Not that it'd be cold, but it'd cool it down a little bit before we got to our location. And then we'd hook the generator up and go from there. But um, this is complicated things just a little bit. Okay, so even the 40 amps is nowhere near countering what this AC is actively pulling in. So let me see how long it takes before the battery would be just dead with this AC on. So with the active amount of sun we have coming in, it's saying that we can make it 17 hours. So that's kind of the thing. We have 1,280 watts on the roof. If we were in like a sunny environment inside with the AC on, you know, we could probably make it 16, 17 hours or whatever. But the, if we run the AC at night, we're not getting anything coming in. And that's where the generator comes in and all that. So we're negative 70 right now. Okay, it dropped down to nine hours. So, <laughs> so the solar took the batteries from 36% to 40% in an hour. So doing the math. And even if we drag our feet for like six hours, I don't know, 65%, something like that. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I debated like hooking a Honda up and letting it run while we're going to Ruby Tuesdays. <laughs> How's your air conditioning? <laughs> Marissa thinks I'm tricking her here. Oh, this is all a lure. You've never offered ever to pull the RV over and take me to Ruby Tuesdays to get the salad bar. What? Ever in our eight years of travel, this, this is all a trap. <laughs> no, it was her idea to boondock. And I said, it's going to be hot. You sure you want to do it? And she said, yeah. And then she changed her mind. And then so I may have brought her somewhere with air conditioning that happens to also have Ruby Tuesdays. So it's part of the, this is. Oh, I know when I'm being trapped. You're not being trapped. <laughs> One of the best things about today's video is we're going to show you numerous stops you can make with your RV. So you don't have to detach for any of them. And you'll know that all these are okay because if we do this with our 40 foot rig, this 13 foot six, probably pretty good on just about anything. So first stop is the Minuteman, Minuteman Missile Historic Natural Site. I got it. <laughs> Minuteman Missile Natural. Oh my goodness, this is the longest name ever. This right here, <laughs> the Minuteman Missile National Historic Site Visitor Center. <laughs> oh my goodness. I called and they said they had air conditioning. So we said, we're on our way. Oh, those look so good. Don't you want to just jump in those, Hensley? Yes. <laughs> I just like that museum. All right, let's go see the museum. That which one? Which one is that? We've been reading your book. That looks like a painted grasshopper, doesn't it? Look how pretty that is. Oh yeah, it's a painted grasshopper. It's so pretty. Oh man, our kids love like bug books, and they love going on bug hunts. That bug is big. So this museum is basically about in this area. They had bunkers with counterattack missiles during the nuclear Cold War standoff with Russia. And so this museum like details what went down with all that. For about 40, 50, 60 years, we had to be ready <laughs> for possibility that nuclear warheads could be coming our way from Russia. What is that? It's a nuclear bomb, buddy. First you duck, and then you cover. Are they taking cover? Yeah, they're taking cover. You know when that wouldn't do any good. <laughs> well, probably not, but when you hear duck and cover, you just duck and cover. I never knew all this. Actually, amazing. I mean, people we've seen so far. I'm not saying it's crowded. It's for... definitely not peak season for Badlands. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's summer. It's peak travel season. Yeah, but every blog I've been reading is like, yeah, you want to go in the spring and fall. It's hot the summer, and it is. It's hot, but people are out, man. We're um, we're tough, right? We can handle this. All right. Thank you. Yeah, don't know that we've ever taken this big rig <laughs> and like just kind of all in and all off and explored like this. We're doing a trail right here, we're going to the visitor center, and then we're going to follow this up and around. We're definitely going to do the Yellow Mounds Overlook. If, we, if there's parking there, I haven't double checked that yet. And then the boondocking spot we're going to do, Nomad View, is right, I think, up in this little area right here. Some good RV parking. You like that? I'll parallel this thing in a second. <laughs> We made it. You don't see that very often. I like it. I like it. I'm sure they can feel it towing it, but I like it. We made it. We made it. This is so cool. I mean, we're in it. Our home is right here, like in the middle of Badlands National Park. You got it, JJ. Come on, buddy. You're doing good. I missed the pool. I missed the pool. <laughs> there you go. Oh my goodness, I know. It's so hot. I made it. Good 
Good job. Good job, buddy. Woo! I'm in the shade. Yeah, we're in the shade now. That feels good. Got about 15 degrees cooler. I mean, part of me wonders, you know, we're here. We made a big deal out of the heat. And it is. It's, I don't know. It's a big deal to us because we're always following the weather. But that's what we just hiked through, guys. Cool? I think sometimes when you do something adventurous and you push through, even though it's hard, maybe it's not what you want to do. I think it does make you stronger. You feel stronger yet? No, we're working on really it. Weaker. All right. We made it. Oh, that's beautiful. Isn't that cool? That's yeah, beautiful, guys. It's 98 degrees right now. <laughs> 98 degrees right now. All right, guys, you ready? Let's go back. <laughs> Before you think to yourself, did these guys not even check the weather? <laughs> We did check the weather. There was no, zero chance of rain, is what it said. And again, high gusts were not supposed to be happening, so I at least did look into that. The weather can change rapidly out here. Marissa's up here. This is one of her favorite things here, these painted mounds. It's really windy up here. This is Yellow Mounds Overlook. Look at all these colors. It's just crazy. It's always going to be windy at this boondocking spot we're going to, but if it's just crazy windy, like 60, 70 mile per hour gusts, like don't do it either. So we we came here, I don't know what, four or five years ago, whatever. For it to be this hot and there be this many people out here, I am blown away. I heard this place was packed all the time now. <laughs> Some of the largest, most level spots have like a Kia in them. <laughs> like, ah. Uh. Yeah, camping has definitely changed since when we hit the road. Straight back, straight back, and stop. Look at this spot. Good news is we're here, and this looks we epic. Well, and the even better news is it does not feel like 99 degrees. No, this that rain awesome. like completely cooled it down. This is just, it's just breathtaking. Tips for Nomad View. First tip, do not tell anyone else about this place. <laughs> we showed up and it's so crowded. You know you're making a YouTube video about it right now. Right? Between us, just between us then. Going back in hindsight, I would say arrive early. We waited because I thought, oh, it's gonna be 100 degrees. There's not gonna be anybody out here. It was still packed, it didn't matter. It's a wide variety of people. It's no longer like just the full timers coming out here for a few nights. We probably should have came over here, set up, and then went in with our truck only and just done Badlands that way in hindsight. And then be patient. When you come in, you're gonna see some spots. You'll think they're kind of level. And then you pull up to them and you'll be like, no, that's not level. Like, just be patient, keep going. And hopefully you can eventually find a level site if you're not arriving late in the day. Okay, so you're really hesitant to come do this whole uh, boondock in 100 degrees. The good news is, <laughs> It ended up not being 100 degrees, it ended up dropping to about 90, <laughs> but it well, was still hot. Well, because that monsoon that happened, it, it really dropped, it, dropped it, it down. It 10 degrees. Yes. It was awesome. Really, when it comes to like, is it worth it to boondock in hot weather, I mean, I think it totally depends. I know for Rissa, like, even in 90 degrees, this is a no-brainer for her and for us. This is one of here. my favorite spots ever. Like, I love this spot. It speaks to my heart. I have amazing memories here from when we were here years ago. And this is why you do it. And this morning, when we got up, drank our coffee in our home, looking at this awesome view while doing that. Like, that's why you do this. You're getting a million plus dollar view for free. <laughs> Think about that for a minute. Like, RVing is a life hack because we get to immerse ourselves in this location, this beauty, but then still have the comforts of, of life with us. Maybe not the comforts of AC, this, this experience, but it was so worth it. It was just incredible. Well, if you want to see our other series on Nomad View and on Badlands and on this area we stayed last time, we're going to link to that playlist. Definitely check that out. This and Badlands are not the only cool thing to do. So there's Wall Drug. If you want to drive into Rapid City from here, you could do it. It's a bit of a drive, but you could use this as a home base. This area, Black Hills, just epic. So place. underrated. So underrated. So underrated. I don't know. It's starting to not be as underrated. People are starting to know about it too. Secrets so. out. But, but <laughs> definitely check out this area. It's like a must do as an RVer.